Here we focus on the topic of metadata curation in Omero. What is metadata? Simply speaking, metadata is data about data. So it's the data accompanying the actual measurement data. In bioimaging, that would be the data accompanying the pixel values that are recorded with the microscope. So metadata is consisting of technical metadata, any information about the instrument with which the images were recorded, but moreover also the sample metadata, all the information that you need to understand the image, given the biological specimen, the sample type, the fixation methods, and so on. Moreover, analysis metadata is very often important to understand how images were used for the research process. Technical metadata are mostly recorded automatically by the machines, however they can also be added manually if missing. The sample metadata is typically found in the researcher's documentation or it could be in a published protocol. There is not one place where metadata can be stored. In bioimaging, metadata is often contained in the image file headers. It could also be contained in a sidecar or additional file. It could be found in an electronic lab notebook or classically in a paper notebook or also implicitly in the data organization. Why does metadata matter? Let's start with the societal perspective. Good scientific practice principles demand that data is fully and correctly described, so results must be reproducible and faithful. On the other hand, there is a commitment to the open science principles. Publicly funded research output should be openly available. So to make use of such open data, metadata is important to understand the data and reuse it. This is also reflected in the fair data principles, that any data should be findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. Metadata plays an important role in all of these, so it enhances reproducibility, trust into research results, openness and it contributes thus to sustainable research. There is also the personal perspective. As a researcher, you depend on funding. Funding agencies demand a plan on how you want to handle research data. This includes at least a minimal metadata standard for any third-party funding grant application. It has also been shown that publications with links to deposited data correlate with more citations, among other benefits for researchers. And there's future me. Metadata annotation will help yourself and your colleagues in the future to reuse your own data. So rich metadata adds value to the research data. What are the standards for metadata in bioimaging? And which metadata should be collected? Unfortunately, there is not a simple answer. This very much depends on the research discipline. For bioimaging specific recommendations, recently some recommendations have been published. You can review the recommended metadata for biological images and also the slightly more detailed metadata tiered system that extends the original OME data model for metadata specifications. Moreover, there could be repository specific requirements that you would like to review early in the process. An example would be the metadata requirements for the image data resource. Now, what is the correct or the best way to work with metadata in Omero? Also here the answer is, there is not one correct way. Omero offers useful possibilities for structured metadata annotation for bioimaging data. As a researcher, or as a group of researchers, you should familiarize yourself with Omero's possibilities. Like with good experimental design, the suitable metadata enrichment for your data should be something you consider in your research process. When in doubt, consult with your core facility staff and reach out to colleagues who have been working with Omero before or attend one of the available Omero-specific workshops. But let's have a look at metadata in Omero. How is it organized? In Omero, metadata can be found in very many places. As we have said earlier, implicitly the data tree organization is some sort of metadata. Under the general tab, we find the metadata on image details, but also on the tags and key value pairs, which we will focus on. You can also find attachments and ratings as part of the metadata. And under the acquisition tab, you find the original metadata based on the imaging session at the microscope. Let's start with tags and repeat what they are. Tags denote a specific property of an entity, like a price tag in the supermarket, and as we have seen, they allow the dynamic re-representation of the data tree. So that is rearranged based on the tag search according to the researcher's interest. Tags can then define similarities and relationships and thus allow a quick access and processing of data of interest. Review the subchapter on data search for this topic. So examples were, you can make Omero search for all the samples treated with compound A, 
or all the data or samples incubated for three hours or all the data recorded with a specific instrument. Which tags you should use depends on your research. You can add tags at all of the given levels to images, groups of images, datasets and projects. And you can additionally define tag categorizations to give some organization to the tags themselves. This could be, for example, very useful in research collaborations. Tags can also be used on the basis of ontology terms or on a collaboration agreement, and we will focus on this topic again later. So it is useful to discuss the suitable tags within your research group or, if available at your institute, with a data manager for your research field. We recommend that you use tags for the data organization across datasets and projects in terms of categorization. This can be done instead of deep folder hierarchies that you might be used to from file systems. And then use key value pairs for the enrichment of metadata details. We have introduced key value pairs as consisting of a key which denotes a real world object or an abstract concept that can be assigned a specific value. The value is then the number or text string specifying that object under key. Examples were the cell type and the value was CD4 positive T cell or which is the disease model and the value could be experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis. As recommended, use key value pairs for metadata details about the experiment. If available, review metadata recommendations in your research field. And we recommend that you use ontology terms in tags and key value pairs, which we will focus on in a later chapter. Examples were the RAMBI guidelines as said before, or also you find examples online, for example here in the YouTube video series of the RDM Bytes by Alexia UK. We will get into more detail, first on the tag annotation in Omero, the key value pair annotation in Omero, and then on the use of ontology terms for metadata annotation.